steering wheel repair. Um, most of our old cars have these old 16 inch boat steering wheels and uh, you know it makes it easy to steer the car when you got manual steering with this big wheel. So I'm going to try and uh, replace, or rather repair, all the cracks in this original wheel. Um, I've seen a lot of ways to do it online. There's a lot of different um, epoxies and fillers you can use. Uh, we're going to do it old school. We're just going to use a little bit of a JV weld, a little time, a little muscle, and we'll get her done. We'll walk you through it step by step. Okay, we've got our wheel taken apart here. We've got the horn button out, the horn ring, everything taken apart. You can really start to see some of the, uh, let's see if I can get this close enough, we can see some of these cracks we have in here. Pretty bad, right? Um, where they crack to is right here where the spokes go. They go all the way around. See that? Real pain to get to. Well, some of the tools we're going to use to prep this steering wheel before we start actually filling in. Um, we're going to use a Dremel with a cutting bit so we can get into those cracks, open them up a little bit so we can get the filler in. Um, we're going to use a couple of wire brushes, possibly something bigger if we need it in those bigger cracks. And when we're done for sanding, well, we're going to use sandpaper and a couple of uh, Dremel drums here, sanding bits, and we'll get it done. All right, first thing to do is we're going to figure out where we're going to start. I'm going to start opening up some of these cracks a little bit. Now, safety first, you should have your eye protection already on. We'll crank this up. Okay, you kind of get the idea where we took the Dremel bit and we opened that crack up a little bit more. That's going to allow us to get some filler right in there and fill that gap nicely, make a nice strong connection. Okay, now one of the things I found is that working with the Dremel, you uh, sometimes you can't get all the way in to some of these areas well enough because you just can't get the right angle. Okay, so what I'm going to try is. Hacksaw. I'm going to just kind of cut in there like this. I'll be able to open that gap right up, no problem. Okay, I've got all the cracks kind of opened up where the spokes meet the outer rim of the wheel. And that's going to allow for the, the uh, JV Weld epoxy to flow right in there. But now we get the bigger section here. And this is pretty well cracked up pretty bad. And yours might be just like mine where it comes apart. Well, procedure's the same. You uh, will clean this areas up here really good. You might use the wire wheel and drill, kind of get that all scuffed up. Same thing with the inner spokes here. We'll get these all cleaned up best we can. We'll clean the actual hub up because we can put a little JB weld in here. And uh, we'll be able to put this back, clamp it back in place, and it'll set. Um, once we get this attached and, and JB welded together, we should be able to uh, add a little more filler in, in the gaps here. And we'll be able to sand it all down and make it look like new. So let's get started on that. I'm using the brass wheel because it's not as abrasive as like a stainless steel or a steel wheel. Um, this plastic does cut pretty easily and what you don't want to do is really tear it apart. Um, the other thing I'm using is I have a, a small hand stainless steel brush and I also have a small brass brush. And that's actually allowing me to get in here a little bit better in between the gaps where the uh, 
power brush isn't letting me get it done so well. I'm just going to get it cleaned up pretty good, best as possible. Um, now you saw it come off in two halves, right? The smaller half actually has a tab bent down through it for the horn ring. And that's where there's a little roller inside your steering column that runs on this little brass or a copper disc here. And I don't really want to bend that up if I don't have to. So I'm just going to leave this piece in place. Even though it's loose, it's just going to stay right there. I'm going to clean up everything around it. This is where it's going to take a little time. But you're going to want to try and get in there in those cracks and prep this best you possibly can. Because if you don't, you're not going to have really good adhesion of the, the epoxy. And that's really the goal. Getting there. Okay. Got all the uh, really rough areas taken care of. Everything's all cleaned up. I went ahead and took some steel wool, which I completely destroyed two full pieces, cleaning up the entirety of the wheel, all the areas on the outside, the inside. Because one of the things you want to do is remove all the oxidation and all the buildup of just general junk on a steering wheel over 50 some years. I mean, plastic does oxidize a little like uh, aluminum does. But also, just the oils from your hands, the food you eat, the things you carry on your hands, they, they stick to the wheel, and you want that gone. Plus, in the cleaning process, I actually found a couple other smaller cracks starting over here, which I went ahead and cleaned up with the Dremel. Now, when you start filling in, start going with your epoxy, you want to start planning out where you want to start first, okay? Because this is going to be a multi-stage process. You're going to do a little at a time in one spot at a time until that spot's done. And then you move on to the next. Um, so we're going to start actually with the biggest and the worst piece, the center hub section. Now what I plan on doing is I'm going to mix up some JB Weld. I'm going to lay a little in here, circular side, along where the, uh, the metal inners go. And then I'm going to stick it together. Okay. Get it all set nice in place. Then what I'm going to do is... Make sure it's not oozing out. Let it sit for a little while. Once it's a little harder, I'm going to come back with a little painter's tape and use it kind of as a dam. And I'm going to, you know, put it on the outside of each side here, this side too. And I'll flip it over. And I'll lay some more JB Weld on the inside and let that set. Once that's set, then I can move to doing to the outside and getting these cracks all filled in. Again, this is a multi-stage process. It's going to take a little time. And then when that's done, then we'll be able to start sanding and finishing. So let's get started with mixing some JB Weld. Okay, I didn't bore you guys with how to mix up JB Weld because you should already know how to do that. Pretty straightforward. Now I'm just going to lay a little thin coating on the wheel. Okay. And I'm going to lay a little bit actually inside the piece here. This is just to get it to start to set, just start to stick in some of the areas that it needs it the most right now. Because part of the problem with this plastic steering wheel is that what causes the cracks in the first place is the plastic starts to shrink and then it pulls off of itself. So that's why there's so many gaps, is we have to fill in the gaps with a lot of extra material to get it to go. <clears throat> and look good when we're all done. A lot like you using Bondo and plastic fillers on bodywork, you want to fill in those little tiny dents and dings and little imperfections. You got to get it right and filled so it can be sanded and look good. All right, it's about where I want it to be for now. Uh, not a lot of oozing out, which is good, just enough. And we're going to let that sit as is. And we'll come back in a bit when that's done, and we'll start to apply some more in a few different areas. Okay, we're going to let that set a little bit. I've just kind of flipped it over, left it how it was, 
I'm just starting to fill in the cracks on the sides and the edge. And what you want to do is just kind of, just like you do in putty, just kind of take this and just kind of push it into those cracks. Again, they're wide cracks. You're going to do a little bit now, a little bit later, and then again a little bit more later, and a little bit more later because it's wide and you don't want to go and dump too much of this epoxy in at one time. You want to build up a couple of nice low coats, low coats rather, uh, and add to it a little at a time. Now it depends on also how fast you work as to which type of uh, epoxy you choose. I'm using the JB Weld Quick Weld, so this stuff goes pretty quick. What's nice about a screwdriver like this is you can jam it right in the slots of some of these big gaps and get that stuff right in there. And then you can use the blade kind of as a putty knife and just push it right on top of it. Now some of the stuff will, like I said, some of the uh, epoxies you use are going to be thinner and they'll flow smoother. I like the JB Weld because it seems to stay a little bit better where you put it and kind of flow nice and slow so you get a little time to work with it. But not too much time where you're chasing and it's running all down the steering wheel where you don't want it yet. Now there are kits you can buy. I'm sure you've all seen them. You've already checked online for other videos. Um, Eastwood makes a kit. Um, Pour 15 makes a kit. And a lot of the places you check online, various forms and whatnot, will tell you, go to your local hardware store. Most of these kits have the same stuff you can buy separately. Um, that's probably my recommendation. So I'm a low buck kind of guy. If I can save a few bucks and do it on the cheap, well, that's what I'm going to do. I've read stories online where people sent their steering wheels out to these professional restoration services only to have them crack within a year anyway. And is it their fault? Well, probably not. Because these steering wheels are still made of the same plastic. We're filling only the parts that have already cracked. Who's to say that in the future, the other areas aren't going to continue to shrink and crack again? Can't really blame them, but it is a lot of money to spend on a restoration of a steering wheel only to have it fail again. It's kind of a hard pill to swallow for me. That's why I'm a do-it-yourselfer. All right, we're going to let that set. We'll come back to it again in a bit. Okay, I've gone ahead and uh, let it set for a bit. Put a little of the painter's tape on the back side like I told you before I was going to do. Makes a little bit of a dam. If you notice, you can see in there, those are some pretty deep cracks. And it's going to take a little time to fill them in to build it up so we can have a, a complete steering wheel again. So I've gone ahead and mixed up a little more JV Weld. And just start laying it in there. And again, I'm using that screwdriver to kind of jam that stuff right down to those deep cracks. Get that filled in nicely. I'm we'll just kind of let it flow into the to the, toward the bottom of that hub there a little bit. One of the things I probably should have told you early on, and hopefully you're watching this whole video before you get started, not going step by step and stopping and starting it, is that uh, when you start grinding on these steering wheels with the Dremel or uh, the wire wheel or what have you, you're probably going to want to wear a dust mask. You don't really want to breathe all that stuff in. Otherwise, when you go to blow your nose later, well, yeah, you get the picture anyway. Don't ask me how I know, because I won't tell you. All right, this is laying in real nice. Don't want to put too much in. I kind of want to let that set. I'm just going to flow in nice. And then we'll come back in later and put a little bit more right in there. Now, I do have a little bit left over from what I made, so I can start a few of these other smaller spots 
like down here in the spoke, just a little bit of a crack grind there. So I'll put a little bit of it there. I'm gonna just kind of push it in like a putty knife. And later on comes the fun part when we actually have to start sanding this stuff down and making it look like a steering wheel again as opposed to uh, some kind of craft show project. Some of these smaller cracks like this, you don't really need to put the tape around it because it's not going to go far. I'm just going to kind of put it in there. It'll stay put. It's not going to flow out. Now one of the other things I did find among the other things when I did the uh, steel wool, I found some dents and dings. A lot of minor imperfections that kind of come up after years of using a 50 year old wheel. Now you can go ahead, we're going to do those a little later on because there's quite a few more we may want to take care of on the, on the rim. We're really concerned about taking care of all the cracks and the big stuff right now. All right. This is going to be a while. We've got a lot of cracks to fill, a lot more areas to take care of. When we come back, we'll probably end up starting sanding and really grinding this stuff down so we can start getting the steering wheel ready for a paint and finish, all right? Okay, we're back. Now, I've taken the tape off and done a little bit of filling on uh, sanding on one side. Let me show you what the tape does over here on this side. I haven't done any sanding or anything yet. And it really gives it a nice contour. I don't know if you can catch that. To make the sanding go a little bit easier. Okay? Really worked out nice as opposed to puttying on like that. Now this is necessary. You can see we, we did miss a few gaps here. Okay? Same thing on this side. Not too bad. Now I've already started sanding on this side of the crack. Now a couple of tools that I've used. I thought I had to change bits on my Dremel to a sanding drum. Uh, I've gotten some sandpaper, some 220 grit, which when you start sanding, quickly what happens is you're sanding not just the JB weld, but the plastic steering wheel, and your sandpaper will fill up fast. You're going to go through a lot of that. So what I started to do instead, went to some files. Got a nice square file, got a half round, the, you know, a nice contour on it, and I've got a full round. And what that's allowed me to do is shape this contour here with the big half round and get down this entire notch here with the full round. And with the square one, or even if the flat one, this whole notch area right here, got that all sanded down nice and smooth. Okay? Now what we also found on this side was, well, we did have some gaps. Again, we knew this was going to be a multi-step process. The gaps were wide. We've uh, sanded it down a little bit. Time for a little more JB weld here. All right, I'm going to show you a little bit of my technique for trying to get some of this uh, dried up JB weld smoothed down to, so we can start, you know, finishing this. So you can see I've already kind of worked this side of this particular spoke. You can see how smooth it is, how the cracks are all just kind of filled in. And then you work your way around and you got all the stuff to sand down. Well, it's easy on the outsides because it's smooth. The inside's a little tougher. That's where I start using the files. Now, I told you before, using the sandpaper, you're gonna tear it up quick. All right, so I mean, you're going into the DB wheel, you're going into the plastic of the steering wheel, it goes slow. Using a file to help get some of that off fast, you can actually just kind of whittle it down nice and easy, taking off a little bit of the JB weld at a time until you get down to the plastic. You go nice and slow, take nice short strokes. Using the round file, when I go, I'm twisting it at the same time. All right. 
And you can see as you're moving it along, pay attention, you start to see where the crack was come into view where the excess JV weld is laying. And once you kind of get the crack area defined, you know exactly where it is, that's when you can switch off to the sandpaper and then really smooth that out and make it crack free, blemish free, and get it prepped for paint. Now, this is a long process, it's a lot of areas to do. When you start getting into these areas of the spokes, well, that's when it's going to be, well, very tedious. Your fingertips are going to get sore. Um, you probably won't be able to use the files in these areas. You're going to have to use sandpaper exclusively. And you can try and use a, a scraper, maybe a, you know, a razor blade, scrape it out. Um, there's no way around it, folks. It's going to be tedious. It's going to be slow going. But... Uh, once it's all done, it'll be very worthwhile. You have a nice, nicely repaired, crack-free steering wheel. You see how it's going there? Taking all the excess off the top side, coming around. See just what I've taken off there. You can see that rotated around. Now you can see just the crack is exposed where the JV weld went in. Now we'll sand that down, take out the excess, feather it all into the plastic, and it'll be a nice solid repair. Again, this is the tedious part, this is the slow going part, it takes a while, but using the files first to get the excess JB weld or whatever epoxy you choose to use out of the way, gets it down faster. Now it needs just a little bit more sanding in that one inside corner there, but for the most part, that section's done. Now I did find a spot over here on the back side of this repair where there's just a little bit of a, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little low spot there. So we'll have to hit that with a little more JV weld, fill in, sand again, repeat. It's part of the process. Like I said, just like body work, it's repetitive, takes time. Okay, we've done a little bit of uh, filing on the hub section here. Let me show you what we got. This is no sanding. This is just take a little time and filing everything down. You can see how we've gotten it pretty good. Filled all the way in. Our crack is now completely filled. Let me show you the inside. Pretty nice contoured. A couple low spots just on the inside of this. This one side here. But not too shabby. Do a little sanding on all the way around on this. Smooth it out a bit. Our contours are good. And this one portion will be all set to go. Okay, we've done a little bit of sanding on the same spot. A little 150 to knock it down quick and then the 220. Not too shabby, right? Show the inside. And you can see there's still those two little uh, low spots in there. Now I can take a little time, I could fill them in. But realistically, once I get that in there, you're not going to see them. All right, it's a lot better than it was when we started. Now there's a lot more work to do on this bad boy. We've got this side. We got this is not too bad. 
That's tough. That's tough. We got this spoke to do. I mean, all in all, it's coming along nice. All right, well, I think by now you guys get the point. A lot of filling, a lot of sanding, a lot of filling, a lot of sanding. Um, it's going to take a lot of time to fill in all the cracks. Um, this wheel was pretty bad, especially in the hub area. A lot of deep, wide cracks. Um, yours may be different. Yours may be too far gone. It's hard to tell. Uh, if you don't want to work on your own steering wheel, because if you only got one, hit a swap meet. Pick one up. It doesn't even have to be for your car if you don't want it to be. Just grab something you can practice on if you're worried about ruining your own you know, original steering wheel. Um, well, after you get everything done, sanded down, then you got to think about finishing this. Well, I've heard of some people having to put on a uh, adhesion assistant. Um, they'll do a classic uh, base coat, clear coat, automotive paint like you do on the outside of your car. Some people just grab an old spray can. Um, I might try that uh, fusion for plastic paint, see how that works out. High temp paint for engines, because these things, that's why they shrink and they crack. They're stuck in the sun. Uh, a lot of ways you can refinish these, but I'm not going to bore you with those details. That's up for you to guys to decide. I've done enough on this already for you. Um, having said that, there's a lot more information on our cars you can find on the club's website at earlycuda.org. Check them out there. Thanks for watching.